Good morning and welcome to worship this morning as we gather in a little bit of an unusual way today. Our lake service that we've been having lately had to be canceled today because of weather here in northern Indiana. Uh, but if you are tuned into the worship today, thank you for being a part of worship as we gather together today. I want to say a huge thank you again to Radio Brian, Flying Brian from WIOE for helping us broadcast this service record this service so that it can be put out into our community and around the world through our Facebook page, our YouTube channel. Uh, so thank you, Brian, so much for your support. I wanna say thank you to Brian Brockla, our worship leader, uh, who is behind the scenes right now, doing a lot of the technical work and helping us get set up for worship. Brian, thank you so much. And I also wanna give a shout out to Mandy Ferguson, uh, who also is behind the scenes in so many different ways. Mandy is our communications coordinator for the church and she is responsible for getting this out into the world through our social media and getting information out to the world through those means as well. So thank you, Mandy, for doing that. Want to give a shout out to those that are helping in worship today because those of you who are listening on the radio don't have the opportunity to see who's involved. So I want to say thank you to Terry White, our organist this morning, our vocalists are Ann Baker and John Kirkpatrick. Our liturgist today is Lauren Sims, and of course our children's ministry director, Mandy Bailey, will be sharing a children's ministry moment with us here in just a moment. As we begin today, I wanna to remind you that today is Communion Sunday, and if you are worshiping with us virtually, I wanna invite you to get some bread, some juice, uh, whatever you have. You know, Jesus in the upper room with his disciples, they used what they had. They had bread, they had table wine, and they use that to celebrate communion. So I'm just gonna invite you to grab whatever you have and join us today uh, during the end of the service. I hope you'll stay and be a part of that communion time. Also wanted to give a, a huge thank you to those that participated in the Beacon Credit Spotlight. Um, if you voted during these days of July um, to help us with our closet ministry here at the church, thank you so much. We're waiting to hear word if we uh, won one of the grants that are being distributed through Beacon Credit Union. We'll let you know once we find that out. Also wanted to give you a heads up, our Servant Council met this week and we will continue thanks to the guidance of Servant Council and our special task force that's looking at where we are with this pandemic, trying to make some tough decisions about coming back together inside for worship. And we have decided that we'll continue to worship at Lucerne Park here in Warsaw. Um, through the month of September, we've reserved the park so you can join us in person outside at Lucerne Park through the month of September. You can also, of course, tune in to WIOE and be a part of worship or go on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. So we gather for worship this morning. Would you please join me in prayer? God, we thank you for your presence with us. God, for the many ways that you bless our lives. And today, God, as we gather for worship, Lord, thank you for the rain that nourishes the earth. Lord, thank you for your spirit that breathes life and nourishes our spirits. And God, as we worship you today, draw us close to you. And God, may we bring you glory and honor. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to sing with us this famous hymn of the church, Blessed Assurance. Oh, my. 
Rejoice and be glad in it. There is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The hour is coming, and now is, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Good morning. Great to be with you, even though it has to be virtual and on the radio. Um, today we're talking about unexpected glory sightings uh, later in the message, but I also wanted to talk about expected glory sightings. And I was thinking this morning about how God is all around us in everything, in every fiber, in every fabric, in every person, um, in every word uh, that is said. Just everywhere we look, there's God. He shows up in everything that we do. So I was looking around my, my house this morning thinking about what could I bring to represent that. So the first thing that I wanted to grab was my backpack. My kids and my husband and I just got back from a, a quick road trip because we needed to get out into nature and hike and um, just be out uh, with God and, and the ways that he creates nature. And so we went on three beautiful hikes. And in all the hikes we've been, been on in the last few years, uh, we always take this backpack. And this backpack was actually given to me by a friend who said, I know how much you, you all like to hike and go out into the outdoors. And so I want you to have this backpack. And so we've taken it everywhere we've gone and it's been great. So not only did she show me God's love in giving me the backpack, but then we've experienced God's glory in all of the hikes we've been on. So I wanted to start with that. Then I put all of my other treasures inside the backpack. And I put lots of things in there. One of the things that I put in there was a block of suet, which is something that birds eat, um, especially during this time of quarantine, this time of being home. We have really found such joy um, and such evidence of God in all of the birds that have been coming to our feeders and um, just really enjoying watching them. And we've had lots of bird nests and watching the eggs hatch and the, the mothers come and feed the babies. It's just brought us such joy um, and just neat God sightings there. Um, I also brought a paddle. Um, I brought a paddle. Actually, it's from a paddle ball set, but it's supposed to represent um, tennis. We love to play tennis as a family. So in playing games together as a family, again, there's God. He shows up there, too. And I love interacting with not only my own family, but with other people. Um, so just in those rich conversations and talking with people and being with people, um, there's God again. I brought a cucumber from our garden. Uh, we love to garden, and every time that something grows, uh, there's God again. Um, and I just think it's so neat to watch the cucumbers come up, and the zucchinis, and the flowers, and the corn, uh, and we find God there too. And just this morning, as I arrived at church, I was sitting in the pews getting ready, and I was reading a newspaper article, and in the article it said, if you can't find joy in the weeding of the garden, you can't be a happy gardener. And I thought, you know, all the things in my backpack that I packed bring joy. They're all good stuff, right? It's easy to find God everywhere we look in the good stuff. But God's there in the tough stuff too. 
it's not fun to weed the garden, but you know, it creates so much more growth in the garden and it creates clear spaces where you can plant new seeds. So there's so much good in the weeding of the garden too. And so I wish if I had to do it over again, I would have packed some more things in my backpack, some tough stuff, some things that represent that. Because sometimes we might have an argument with a friend or there might be an illness in our family or there might be unrest around us. And so we want to step in and be evidence of God in those situations. How can we do that? We need to speak words of kindness. We need to offer love everywhere that we go and with every person that we meet. And so it's so important that we help others see God in ev every place that we go in every experience that we have. So let's continue to share those, experience with, those experiences with other people in our words, in our actions, every place that we go. Let's pray about that. Lord, thank you so much for being evident everywhere we go, in every place, in every fiber, in every person, you show up. Help us to take time to notice that, to notice you, to be with you, and help us to see you even in the tough times, in the tough stuff, and help us to be evidence of you in everything that we say and everything that we do as we interact with others. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mandy. That reminded me this morning as I was getting ready, looking out the window, I saw a ruby-throated hummingbird. And it was just an incredibly beautiful sight. So, Mandy, thank you for those reminders of God's expected glory sightings as we go through our days. We're going to spend some time in prayer this morning as part of our worship. We'll start with a moment of silence, and then I will lift up some prayers. We normally close with the Lord's Prayer, but being Communion Sunday, I'm going to invite you to hold off on the Lord's Prayer, and we'll pray that together during communion time later on in the service. Let's join our hearts in prayer. God, you are there in every sunrise. You are there in every newborn's cry. Lord, you're there in the good times. You're there in the tough times. God, you're there when gardens are flourishing. You're there when weeds are flourishing along with them. And God, we thank you. A reminder to us from nature, God, your nature points to you constantly of your presence with us, walking with us, a reminder of your love for us. And God, as we gather for worship in the ways that we're doing that right now, God, thank you for the church, the body of Christ that's gathered together. And God, as we gather together to worship you, Lord, thank you that you pour out blessings in so many different ways. God, this morning as we gather for worship wherever we are today, thank you, Lord, for the church, the body of Christ around the world. Lord, we're one small part of that larger picture. And thank you, God, for the opportunities that you give to us as part of that body to be able to share your light and to share your love, to share the good news of Jesus Christ who's come into this world to save and to set us free. And God, the good news that Jesus has sent his Holy Spirit to be with us always. And Lord, we thank you for the ways that you show forth your kingdom throughout the world through the body of Christ. God, guide us as a church. Lord, these are crazy, uncertain times. And uh, Lord, I know that there's a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of finger pointing, um, a, lot, a lot of just uncertainty right now. And God, I pray you would give wisdom and guidance to those who are making decisions within the churches around our world today. Lord, as churches gather back together, Lord, that you would give them your wisdom and guidance. God, that you would keep your church, your body safe. Lord, this morning, we also think about all of those that serve in so many different ways from our local communities to our states, our nation, and around the world. Lord, the decisions that they are having to make each and every day as things change and as this uncertainty continues, God, give them great wisdom and guidance. Those that work in the medical profession, Lord, that are trying to find answers, trying to find solutions. And Lord, as theories go out um, that oftentimes can't be proved, Lord, we ask that you would be with those who are trying to find some answers to this pandemic, that you would guide them and give them wisdom. God, we also want to pray for all of those um, who are serving in our local communities. I think of our first responders. Lord, all of those in ministries throughout our communities that are trying to offer help and assistance to those in need. 
Lord, bless them, encourage them, give them strength, and guide them, Lord, in the important work that they're doing. And Lord, bless our nurses, bless those that are in the hospitals and in clinics that are caring for the most sick. God, they're worn out and they're broken and they're dealing with such unthinkable stuff. God, we pray that you would give them great strength and wisdom and God, that they would know your strong presence with them. God, give them the rest that they so desperately need. God, this morning, we also want to lift those who serve our nation and our armed forces. Lord, please watch over them wherever they are today. Keep them safe. Lord, help them, guide them in the important work that they've been called to do. And God, please bring them home to be with their families soon. God, this morning, we are also grateful for those that we are close to. We thank you, Lord, for family. Thank you, Lord, for close friends and those, Lord, that have had a great impact in our lives and that we love dearly. Lord, draw them close to you during these times. Lord, may they know your strong presence with them. Lord, family and friends who are struggling through difficult times, God, would you speak your healing power into their lives? God, hold them close through times of grief and uncertainty. Lord, be with those that are suffering and struggling to make ends meet. And God, we ask that you would bless those, not only in our families and those that are close to us, but those in our communities and around our world today that are hurting. God, let the power of your presence bring hope and encouragement and comfort and solutions. God, we are so incredibly grateful for who you are. God, for the blessing of your presence with us. God, for your forgiving and healing grace. And God, we thank you for the many ways that you are working in our midst. We ask that, Lord, you would open our, our, our eyes, our hearts, our minds. Lord, open our arms as well. And Lord, that we would follow closely after you as you lead us. God, for all that you are and all that you give, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 28 verses 10 through 19a from the New Living Translation. This is the word of the Lord. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled toward Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stopped there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven, and he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. 
they will spread out in all directions, to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What is more, I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. The next morning Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he had rested his head against and he set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. He named that place Bethel, which means house of God, although it was previously called Luz. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lauren, for sharing that scripture with us this morning. Meanwhile, on the young and the restless, <laughs> as we follow this story of Genesis, it's incredible. Uh, and you know, these are, these are a family that are lifted up throughout the ages as model families of faith. And yet, these families are anything but perfect. They are dealing with family stuff. And don't we all deal with family stuff? And as I read these stories, and I hope as you read these stories, you have some maybe hope for yourself, for myself, and that God is able to walk with us through the weeds of life, through, through the drama of life. Um, and as we continue on this journey through Genesis, we see this story unfold. And it's a reminder to us of the faithfulness, not necessarily of people. God, people can be faithful in following God, but more about the faithfulness of the God that we know, that we love, that knows and loves us, and the God that we serve. Would you please pray with me? God, thank you for your holy word. Lord, all of scripture, from the very beginning in Genesis, all the way through to the incredible prophecies that take place in the book of Revelation. God, you speak to us. You speak to us the life and the love of God. You speak to us a relationship God, that you long for with each one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what our life is like, no matter what's happening around us. Thank you, God, that you speak to us today in this time, long after these scriptures were penned. You speak to us in powerful ways through your word. And God, I pray that you would speak to us once more through the power of your Holy Spirit, awakening us and opening our eyes, those things you would have for us to see today through your word. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing in your sight, our great rock and redeemer. Amen. So we've been on an adventure the last few weeks following the families of Abraham and Sarah, of Ishmael and Isaac and Rebekah, and now we come to these stories surrounding these children, these twins, Esau, Jacob, and in particular, we follow the story in the life of Jacob today, as Jacob goes on an incredible journey that he sent off on. And what's interesting about the journey that Jacob goes on, it's not this holy journey that Jacob goes on. It's, it's a ploy, again, a ploy. And it surrounds this story of, of, of deception, of uh, jockeying for position, of taking some questionable actions. As Jacob takes some questionable actions, last week we heard about Jacob stealing the birthright of his twin brother Esau who came first. Today we follow this story just before what we read today in scripture. We follow the story of Jacob's mother, mother of Esau as well. But if you remember, Jacob was loved by his mother while Esau was loved by Isaac, his father. And we follow this story with the story of Jacob's mother jockeying for position with Jacob and making sure that Jacob gets the blessing that the first child is supposed to get in that time, in that age, in that culture. And she shifts Jacob into the place that Esau should have had in a deceptive sort of way. And we look at scripture 
And we look at these incredible families and we think, really? That's our model to follow? Gee, I'm not doing so bad after all. And as these family stories unfold, again, it's not a reminder of how great these people are. And, and don't get me wrong, these people were faithful, they were obedient. We heard the story a couple of weeks ago about how Abraham followed God's lead to the point of bringing his son, the promised one, Isaac, to the altar. So these people were faithful, they were obedient to God, they followed after God, they walked with God, but they were anything but perfect. And it gives me hope. It gives me hope in my life as I look at things unfold and I look at the things that I do and the choices that I make and the outcomes of things that happen in my life. And as we follow this story with Jacob, Jacob having just deceived his brother a second time to be able to get the incredible blessing of the first child from his father, Isaac, and knowing that his brother Esau is really, really not happy with him, <laughs> Jacob takes off and he heads off to the homeland of Haran. And as Jacob heads off on this journey, I can imagine Jacob had no clue exactly how this would unfold. And you know, we've, we looked at that sermon series before we jumped into the story of Genesis about what to do when you don't know what to do. That was what these folks' lives were all about. And you know what, when we follow after God, when we sense God's leading and we say, yes, God, and we follow the Lord's leading and we take those steps of faith, we're right there with Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, and this whole family of, of not knowing what that next step might lead to and trying our best to sense God's leading and take those steps of faith. And Jacob takes that step of faith even in the midst of incredible deception and heads out to Haran. This was a treacherous journey. He could have been robbed. He could have been beaten on the path. He knew that. And so he was fearful, I would imagine, not knowing what to expect when he got back to his father's homeland. And on the course of his journey, he has an incredible encounter with God that I want to highlight today and I want to leave with us today. Again, Jacob, the deceiver, the manipulator. And you know what? Jacob comes by it honestly. You look at the story of Abraham and Sarah, you look at the story of Isaac and Rebekah, there was a lot of things that happened that were not exactly upright. So Jacob learned firsthand how to do this. And as he was journeying along, journeying along his way, he encountered the presence of God. It wasn't that God wasn't with him. It wasn't that, that God wasn't walking with his grandfather Abraham and the descendants down to where Jacob is. And it wasn't that he didn't have some sort of an, an understanding of the relationship with God. But what Jacob encounters in this dream, the very presence of God, and this is such an incredible story, the imagery is amazing as Jacob dreams. And I know we all have dreams from time to time. Some of us might say, I never remember my dreams or I don't dream that much. Others of us, I dream all the time and I wake up and it's just as real as real can be. When Jacob woke up from this dream, this dream was as real as real can be. But during that dream, he had this image, a connection between heaven and earth. Jacob's ladder is what we call it. And the angels descending and ascending on the ladder. And God's voice speaking to Jacob. And again, this is nothing unusual and new because God's voice spoke to his grandfather Abraham to his father Isaac, these men and these families had been journeying with God through all of their beautiful gardens and their weeds, and God had been speaking to them. But Jacob had an encounter, a profound encounter with the living God, who was walking with him all through his life. And it reminds me that God walks with us through our lives. Sometimes we're aware of that, as Mandy shared in the children's message, sometimes we see things that remind us, that's God, God's with us. A lot of times we completely walk by it and don't even notice, but God is with us from the very beginning. And I know some of you may be hearing this and you may be thinking, wait a minute, my life really, really stinks. And there's very few things I can point to to say, there's God in the midst of that. And I understand that because not everybody's life is as wonderful as we would like for it to be. 
And many of us have that Rockwellian picture of what family is and what life should be and walking this journey of life. But you know what, if we're honest, and that's the thing, because a lot of us are not honest about it. If we're honest, we could say, my life was not perfect. There are situations in my life where I felt like God was as far away from me as possible. So if you are in that place and you're thinking, you know, this applies to somebody else because this has nothing to do with me. It doesn't. It applies to all of us because we all, the Bible tells us that we all are falling way short of what God has for us. And you know what God has for us? It's not that our lives would look beautiful and perfect. And that's the false. That's the lie. That's what Abraham and Sarah strove for when they thought, okay, God said we're going to have children, but we're like in our 90s, so let's, let's make something happen. It's what Isaac and, and Rebecca and Jacob worked so hard to make happen. And we do that. We try to make these things happen because we just don't see it. And things really are, are, are stinking at the moment. But God's hand is with us each step of the journey even in the midst of those painful situations that we find ourselves in, even in the midst of a life that we feel like we've just kind of, just kind of thrown away. It doesn't make any sense. Or things have happened, and we point to those things constantly and say, God, where were you? That God was present each step of the way, calling us not to get it right. And that's where I trip up so many times. I think if I just got it right, if I just did the right things, if I just did this or this and this and that, everything would have maybe worked out okay. Or if this didn't happen in my life and I point to those things and those people that cause such pain and difficulty in my life and say, if it wasn't for those scumbags in my life, my life would be so much better. And maybe it would. But as these stories unfold, they're a reminder that our life is about a walk with the God who created us. A walk that oftentimes takes us through valleys of pain and difficulty. A walk that often takes us through those times where just blah, nothing. And yet God's constantly working, constantly striving to get our attention and to say, I've got this. I'm with you. And as Jacob was making that journey to Haran, across this treacherous land, thinking in his head, I can imagine a billion thoughts. Hopefully some remorse over what he did to his brother Esau, but maybe not. The very presence of God met him right there. Well, that was Jacob, right? Jacob's the descendant of Abraham. Of course God's going to show up and get his attention. Doesn't he do that to everybody, though? Does he? If God in heaven wants us to know him and to experience a relationship with him, my sense is that God is constantly working to get our attention. Jacob could have missed that. He could have woken up from that dream and thought, you know that burrito I had last night? I bet that's why I had that dream. <laughs> We can always skate by things that happen in our lives. But as Jacob recounted that dream when he woke up, and he visualized that stairway between heaven and earth, and the connection of God and the angels going up and down, as he heard what God spoke to him again, Jacob, I have plans for you. I don't believe that that promise and that word was just for Jacob. Sure, it was in that moment. It was for Jacob. But I believe God has a promise and a word for each and every one of us, no matter who we are, no matter what our life looks like. And I'm banking on it. And I've seen it played out in so many ways, even in my own life. God has purpose and plans. And you know what it's about? With Jacob, it was about fulfilling this incredible promise that God would bless the entire earth through his descendants. That Jacob would inherit this land that he was standing on and that God would pour out blessing into his life. The promise God has for us may not look exactly like what Jacob's promise was from God. But you know what the promise is? 
it's not about land. It's not about possessions. It's not even about being a blessing to the whole world, although it is. You know what it's about? It's about us knowing the presence of God wherever we are, from moment to moment. And drawing close to that presence and becoming more and more connected in God's presence. I'm reminded as Abraham journeyed, he started out in this obscure place in what we know today as Iraq, traveling with his family up the river to what we know now as part of Syria. And we don't see any mention of God's presence or conversation with God, but as Abraham walks with God and as these stories unfold in his life and as he pursues a relationship with God, as God pursues a relationship with him, that relationship grows. And we see that unfold in Abraham's life. And you know what, Jacob could point back to that. I mean, he knew it. He had to know the story. I'm sure his dad, Isaac, and even Grandpa, Abraham, shared that story with him. And as he heard that story, he knew. But there's a difference between knowing the story and living, stepping into and being a part of that story. This was an epiphany moment for Jacob as God's presence came to him in that moment, and he said, Jacob, those stories that you heard, they're not just stories. Those promises that you heard, they're not just promises. These are your stories. You can have that relationship with me, walk with me, and journey with me, because I am unfolding before you an incredible plan for you, for your descendants, for the entire world. So no matter where we are in this journey, so we see this story unfold over the decades and centuries and millennia. We point back to that story of Jacob and his journey and God meeting him on the road. And Jacob, the scripture said that his eyes were opened in that moment. And he recognized that, that he was in the very house of God the very place where God's presence was. And it wasn't just about these stories that he had heard in his head, but it was about a relationship that he had encountered the living God right there on that road in the midst of his angst and his deception and his mess. He was a mess and God came to him. There's hope for me, there's hope for you. No matter what mess we're in, God comes to us. And he calls to us just like he called to Jacob, He says, will you walk with me? Will you know me? We have a choice to make. Jacob could have chosen not to. I could choose not to. You could choose not to. But boy, when we choose not to, boy, do we miss out. So my hope for us today, as we hear this story anew, and I know some of you have probably heard this story a billion times, that our eyes would be open to be able to know the presence of God, not just go through the motions of religion, not just follow in the steps of our grandparents or our parents, although they are great witnesses of walking with Jesus and walking with God, but to encounter the living God on this journey of life. That's my prayer for us. God, I thank you for these stories from Genesis because they're reminders to me, and I need them. Lord knows I need them. Of how you can take a life, a life with good stuff, but a life also with a lot of mess up. A life of of obedience, of following you, but also a life of saying, I don't think so. Following my own way. You can take the life of a man named Abram who became Abraham who wanted to make things happen in his way, in his timing. Draw him close to you, to the point that he would sacrifice his own son to follow after you. Lord, what an incredible picture of what you have done on our behalf. So God, we thank you that you don't ever give up on us. 
thank you for reminders like this of your incredible love for us. God, may that truth penetrate into the thick weeds of our hearts and our minds and our spirits that we would encounter, just as Jacob did along the road, the living God. And God, that you would awaken us to your love for us, to your call upon our lives to follow closely after you. And God, we thank you and we praise you. Keep the story going, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, as we wrap up our time of worship today, we're jumping, what, 2,000 plus 1,500 years? We're jumping a long way from the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the time that Jesus met in his upper room with those disciples. Keep in mind those disciples were anything but perfect. Again, we tend to lift them up because of all of the things that they did in following after Jesus and all of the things that they did as they journeyed about that region sharing the gospel. But these were just ordinary folks, just like you, just like me, who had said, okay, yes, Jesus, I will follow you, not knowing where you're going to lead or how it's going to unfold. So God calls each one of us. And if you've never celebrated Holy Communion before, and, and I realize that that's a possibility, if, that, if that's you and you've never done this before, maybe you've heard about it, maybe you never have. We come to this time of communion, the sacrament of the church, as a reminder to us of God's incredible love for us and the ways that God has called us to walk in relationship with him. As that story unfolds of, of Jacob and then on from there and his descendants, you follow the line through King David, down to the birth of Jesus. God's promise. God's promise fulfilled. And that promise, again, is relationship with him. And so what this accomplishes, what this does, what this is about, it's coming to the table and reminding us of God's incredible love for us through Jesus. And Jesus welcomed us all didn't exclude anybody. He said, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. And I know many of us are feeling it right now. Some of us feel very far, far away from God. We long for this to be true. We hope for it to be true. And Jesus says, come and taste and see that God is good. And he invites you to this table as well. And as I mentioned earlier on, just get some, whatever you have in front. If you're sitting down to the breakfast table right now, just take your breakfast food. That's basically what the disciples and Jesus did in the upper room. They took the common bread and the, the wine. That cup that they used was significant because of the celebration of Passover. But you can take whatever you have in front of you this morning and celebrate communion together, a reminder of God's love poured out for us through Jesus. So Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, I invite you to confess sin before God. You know what sin is? Sin is simply separation, a distance between ourselves and our relationship with God. It manifests in a lot of different ways, but that's basically what it is. And as scriptures remind us, and I mentioned it earlier, we all sin and fall short of God's best for us in relationship. So what we're doing when we confess sin is we're just agreeing, God, I've blown it. My relationship with you is not like what I would like for it to be. So let us confess our sin before God and one another, beginning with this moment of silence. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires are known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Lord, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, that we may worthily magnify your holy name. God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. 
we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Just like our forebears in the faith, Lord, we've tinkered and we've tried to make things happen apart from you. Forgive us, we pray. Open our eyes to your presence and your ways. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of your great love for us in Jesus Christ, God, we offer ourselves today as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here that are gathered around our radios, our computers, our televisions, wherever we are worshiping today. And God, pour out your blessing upon these gifts, whatever food, whatever drink that we have. God, may they be for us, the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, I invite you to join me as we lift up the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to receive from the grace of our Lord Jesus. The body of Christ given for us. blood of our Lord Jesus shed for us. Amen. I invite you to join with us as we sing our closing song, Freely, Freely.
power is given in Jesus' name, in earth and heaven, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, I come to you. As he told me to, he said, freely, freely, you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you you for being a part of worship this morning. Go in the grace of God, allowing his presence to fill you and to guide you as you journey with him. God bless you. Yes, me too. Say hi. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> 